Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, DwyerVIP.com, a free site. Today is May the 26th, 2019. Let's talk boxing. There was a great interview, excellent interview, kudos all around, by the Michael K. Show. Michael K., of course, is one of the announcers for New York Yankee games, big figure in New York City, right? And K., and two of his colleagues interviewed Anthony Joshua. Right now, Joshua, very conversational. One of the better uh, interviews that we've had for a recent heavyweight champion. Right? And Joshua was chatty, dropping such tidbits that, you know, such as the fact that um, his idol is Mike Tyson, who he has never met. Right? And he talked about some other things. The purpose of this video is to just let people know that the reason why you haven't had the privilege, the honor, of watching Anthony Joshua up against Deontay Wilder is because Joshua, as he told Michael Kay, only offered Wilder $15 million to fight him last year in Wembley. Right now, I'll just say this as an aside, right? Just in the course of the work I do professionally, I've been involved in some big negotiations. I'm always amazed, always amazed, when we reach that point in the road where the other side decides that they don't want the deal to be a win-win deal. Right? They don't, you know, they, they seem to think that if they insult you or if they tell you how lucky you are to have been offered what you're being offered, that somehow you're going to feel good taking less than... 20% of the deal, right? On the Michael K. show, after Joshua admitted that they offered Wilder $15 million, understand Joshua's as good a source as any on what was actually offered, right? One of the guys on the show said to him, well, you know, understand that sounds like a lot of money. But according to some reports, you were going to make more than a hundred million dollars off that fight. Now Joshua was prepared for that question. Joshua said quickly, I wish. I wish. So then they pressed him further because folks, this is New York City media. Right? Come strong or don't come at all. The host then said, well, how much were you going to make on that fight? Were you going to make $50 million on that fight? 50 And Joshua just laughed and said, Hey, I don't want to talk about the numbers. This is after, of course, dropping the $15 million and the fact that he wasn't going to quite make $100 million. Joshua didn't want to talk about the numbers after that. Right? Would not confirm or deny that he was going to make $50 million on the deal, right? He did acknowledge that he was fighting in front of 90,000 people, right? And, of course, this fight would have taken place after Joshua's victory over Vladimir Klitschko. So, presumably, they knew the numbers from the Klitschko fight, right? They'd already fought in front of 90,000 people in the very venue that they were going to fight Deontay Wilder. So, what I want people to understand is there's a moment in a negotiation, most negotiations, practically every negotiation I've been involved in, and understand, I'm trial counsel, right? I just had a trial in early April, right? I end up in trial when cases don't settle. Just food for thought, right? I had a trial last year that went several days. Just understand that there's a point in a negotiation where it could be a win-win. 
right? You're representing your client, your client, whether you're an agent, a lawyer, whatever you are, right? Your client can walk away having gotten something good from the negotiation. This isn't about the other party's motivation. If you're representing your client, you're interested in a profit for your client. Right? The whole point of a settlement is to lock in a profit for your client. So if you're in a settlement negotiation, you'll know that you're negotiating with amateurs, fools, idiots. When they try to insult you, what's that about? Worse yet, you'll know you're negotiating with the deluded, folks who don't see the big picture. When they try to tell you that you worked for peanuts before and so you should work for 20% of the deal now right every deal is different so understand and I believe older people get this I believe Lennox Lewis gets it Lewis is on record as saying Joshua should have offered Wilder a percentage a respectful percentage Right? Only one man on the planet could give Anthony Joshua an opportunity to win the WBC Heavyweight Championship. One man. Right? Fighters who have life figured out understand that you get paid for your next fight. Right? Understand the value of momentum. Joshua had just beaten Vladimir Klitschko. Right? He's never going to have that moment again. Right? Joshua had just proven himself before 90,000 people at Wembley. He had a certain credibility. He was the center of the heavyweight universe. At that time, Tyson Fury was a long way from reestablishing himself as a viable opponent. Right? At that point, you had unbeaten Anthony Joshua and you had unbeaten Deontay Wilder. Now, I know many people here online disagree with me, but understand, let's be conservative here. Let's take the lower figure that Joshua would neither confirm nor deny. Let's say Joshua was going to get $50 million, and he's offering Wilder $15 million. My question to you, the 50 plus the 15 equals, according to my math, 65 million dollars. Now again, we're using the conservative 50 million dollar figure for the Joshua part of the equation. Right? From my seat. Just in terms of money and momentum. Just in terms of legacy. In terms of striking while the coals are hot. Shouldn't Joshua have offered Wilder 40% of the $65 million? Not $15 million of $65 million, but 40% of $65 million. I'll tell you what. Understood what Joshua planned to gain. Wilder would have had to have fought Joshua in his venue, which would require Wilder to travel across the Atlantic Ocean. He'd be fighting Joshua in Joshua's backyard. 
where Joshua is loved. Wouldn't this be like forcing Wilder to go to the Philippines to fight Manny Pacquiao? Wouldn't this be like forcing Wilder to go to Las Vegas to fight Canelo? Just to understand what it's worth, fighting a loved fighter in that fighter's backyard. Right? If Joshua stands a chance to win the fight, wow, the place where he would stand the best chance would be in his backyard, wouldn't it? Shouldn't Wilder have been offered really at least $10 million more million to fight Anthony Joshua than he was offered? <laughs> Folks, at some point, Folks need to do the math. At some point, they need to realize, I have momentum here. Even if Joshua had paid Wilder $30 million, 30, and netted 35 for himself, you're not going to go broke making $35 million for a championship bout. You beat Wilder, you're the man. You have his title, right? Even though the lineals out there, you have the sanctioning body titles. You have incredible momentum. Boxing fans in the United States, talk about a way to sell yourself to the United States, would know that you beat their champion. Joshua would be in a different place than where he is right now. Rather than offer him 15 mil, let's say he offered him 25. Understand, if Joshua spent $10 million in advertising from then to now, he wouldn't give himself the lift that he would have gotten by paying Wilder the $10 million fighting him and beating him and winning the titles in the ring. So you missed out on the Joshua Wilder fight. These guys have been risking it all. Think about it. The fight's still viable, but understand what it's taken to keep the fight viable. Wilder fighting the lineal and getting a draw in a fight where, quite frankly, he was being embarrassed. A fight that most of the public, certainly most of the people on my website here on YouTube, according to the poll, firmly believe Fury won. Then understand Wilder fought Dominique Brazil. Had to KO him. On the Joshua side of the ledger, he fought a former heavyweight champion, former Olympic gold medalist, Alexander Povetkin. Right? Just understand the road that these fighters have had to travel because Joshua wouldn't offer Wilder an extra $10 million a year ago. Right? Make the offer make the fight just just food for thought understand there's a ceiling in that Wilder Joshua negotiation especially back then right if they're gonna take advantage of British box office of 90,000 people at Wembley right I think the 90 is a little bit high but let's say the numbers close to 90 then it's understood that Joshua has to at least make the money that Wilder's making. So if they were splitting a $65 million pot, and I know that number's low, folks, right? But if they were splitting a $65 million pot, everyone involved in the negotiation would understand that the most Joshua could offer Wilder would be a little bit more than thirty million dollars. Understand too, there are other things involved in a negotiation, right? Discussions on a rematch. 
different TV markets, how that's split up. Things like that. They're non-monetary things that you can throw into the mix. Right? Fighting on each other's cards. Right? They're things that boxing fans aren't even aware of that you can use to close a boxing deal. Right? So I know for young people who've never been involved in a big time the multi-million dollar negotiation. I understand they're going to say, hey, our guy was more worthy. Right? This other guy fought for peanuts before by comparison. He should fight for peanuts now. That's not the way the world works. Events have price tags. If you're a big reason why the event has a big price tag, then you understand that you should get at least 40% of the money that flows through that event. Right? The bottom line is that of all the opponents out there that Joshua could have faced at that time, right? I would argue the lineal deserves more consideration now. But at that time, with the lineal just coming back to the sport, of all the people in the world Joshua could fight, the person who would give him the most of everyone on the planet was Deontay Wilder. Right? Wilder should have been treated that way. Right? Lennox Lewis, who's been around. Right? Lennox Lewis, who's traveled these roads in the past. Right? Who's fought men like Evander Holyfield, Joshua's idol, Mike Tyson. Lennox Lewis, who himself, in addition to being heavyweight champion, won the gold medal in the 1988 Olympics. Right? Lennox Lewis understood. You need to offer Wilder a reasonable percentage. Right? So with all due respect to the multitude of you who in response to earlier videos have said, hey, Josh was the man. Josh was the person responsible for most of the 90,000 people. Right? Let me just say, even if all of that is true, wouldn't Joshua legacy-wise have gotten the most out of beating Deontay Wilder than he would get fighting anyone else on the planet? Given the profit he stood to make and the momentum he had at the time, and let's be clear here, that momentum's gone now, right? If you remember the goodwill that Joshua had from the public after he beat Vladimir Klitschko, if you remember the singularity of that event and the shine it casts on Joshua after that fight, you understand that while Joshua's still in the limelight, while he still has a shine, he doesn't have that shine. The momentum of him fighting Vladimir Klitschko, then pivoting and fighting Deontay Wilder, that moment has passed. I also want you to keep track of the money, right? Understand. Had Joshua offered Klitschko, excuse me, had Joshua offered Wilder just another 10 to 15 million dollars, just 40% of the event. Right? Just 40% of the event with reasonable rematch terms. An offer that was never made. We might have had that fight already. Then you know who would have been fighting Tyson Fury? It would have been Anthony Joshua if he beat Deontay Wilder. Let's say the guys had a great fight. Let's say that first fight was like Bo Holifield's first fight. A classic which would have lifted both men in the public opinion. 
Then they could have said, hey, let's do it again. That second fight would have been even bigger. Could have lifted both men to even higher highs. Folks, we're just reminiscing about a lost opportunity now, aren't we? Instead of a win-win, we had a non-event. Right? The fight didn't happen. The fight hasn't happened. Now if Joshua's going to fight Wilder, he's going to have to spend a hell of a lot more money to make that fight happen. There's even going to be a discussion on whether the fight happens in Wembley versus some other location. Understand how ridiculous the lowballing was. And I know people say $15 million is not lowballing. Of course it is. When it's less than 40% of the event. When they're telling you, hey, you're one of the headliners. <laughs> there, are only, there are only two men fighting and you're one of them. This event is going to net 100. And we're going to pay you 15. Right? Just think about how ridiculous it is. You're dealing with Shelly Finkel. Understand, Finkel has been in the game so long that he was involved with Oscar De La Hoya when Oscar De La Hoya was first turning pro. Just do some Google searches. Right? Just do some, some Google searches. Al Heyman is a guy involved with if not the biggest, then some of the biggest drawing events in boxing history. Wasn't he involved in Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao? Folks, you're kidding yourself if you think that was the only big fight Floyd Mayweather was involved in. Wasn't Heyman involved in Floyd Mayweather versus Saul Alvarez? So you can imagine how ridiculous it is that these men are there representing their fighter and they're getting offered far less than 40% of the event. Even though their guy is the one guy on the planet at that time who would be able to give Joshua a shot at the WBC heavyweight title. Understand how ridiculous it is, folks. Deontay Wilder, as I make this video, is the longest reigning current heavyweight champion. Right? He's reigned longer than Joshua. You're going to go to him and you're going to offer him less than 40% of the event? Don't get lost in the numbers. Don't think about your life and then think, man, if somebody offered me $15 million, I would take that deal. Look, son, you're not the WBC heavyweight champion. You're not part of an event that's huge where they're offering you less than 40% of the event. So what I want people to do is to look at Lennox Lewis's views on this. A guy who's traveled that road. A guy who's been heavyweight champion. A guy who's been in big events. A guy who understands when you have a shot at somebody else's title and beating that person can give you a glow that you haven't had and your career has a certain momentum going where this would be the cherry on top of the Sunday, right? You have to treat the person you're negotiating with with respect, right? I really don't have anything to say past a certain point to people I'm negotiating with who, you know, are offering my client peanuts, who think that they can insult me and somehow I'm then going to say oh I've been insulted let me lower my settlement demand right I don't I don't really know what to say to those people right either the negotiation is going to be a win win
or folks are going to walk away from the table. Deontay Wilder's folks walked away from the table. Anthony Joshua now is trying to sell himself to American fans in a great venue, Madison Square Garden, that has what, less than a third of what Wembley has in terms of seating capacity? I'm a big Andy Ruiz fan. Right? Full disclosure, he's one of my favorite fighters. But, right, I believe even Andy Ruiz knows that this fight doesn't carry the buzz and the opportunity and legacy for AJ that a fight against Deontay Wilder would carry. Right? Make low ball offers and insist on them at your own risk. Right? It's been so bad for AJ and the zone that the zone had to double back and offer Wilder an arm and a leg in a multi-fight deal. Right? They wouldn't have to have done so had they treated this guy with respect the first time around. If the AJ folks really feel Wilder is that beatable, right, and I personally would take AJ in a fight over Wilder, then why didn't they consider the possibility of offering Wilder at least 40% of the event, having it in their backyard with a good rematch clause, a fight that's winnable, that if you win, then you've just completely built up your legacy to the point where it's an overwhelming crescendo. Right? It'll take AJ a long time to get back to where he was right after he beat Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Many people were surprised by that. Let me raise my hand. It was a great fight. You felt that this was a passing of the torch. Right? Young guy now has emerged, has validated himself. And there you have the WBC heavyweight champion who was willing to fight you in your backyard. You sit down to have a negotiation and it goes so poorly that a year later the fight still hasn't happened. It goes so poorly that the WBC champion offers you $50 million to fight him at a location of his choice and you still can't get the deal done. Right? Legendary executive Dick Parsons in giving advice to young people would always say, leave something on the table. The world's smaller than you think it is. The people you're dealing with now on this deal, you might run into some of them later on other deals. Right? Make it a win-win. Have people on both sides of the table feeling good about themselves. Right? Somebody should have told that to the Joshua people before they blew the Wilder negotiation last year. Let me close with this. You had a dominant middleweight champion. Trust me, he was the middleweight division in the 1980s. Marvin Hagler. And he got offered a fight against Ray Leonard, who hadn't been in the ring for three years. It was for big money at the time. Hagler had shown up at Ray Leonard events, wanted to fight Ray years earlier. Well, here he got offered the fight, right? After years of waiting. And Hagler worked with two guys, right? The uh, Petroselli brothers. They had his back. They were with him for years. So one of the brothers went over to Hagler as Hagler was thinking about whether he wanted to do the fight. Hagler kept everyone waiting. And the brother said to Hagler, hey, you know, we'll cut our fees to make this fight happen. Right? They wanted, you know, they understood this was bigger money than anybody in that corner had made, that 
bigger money than Hagler had made. Right? And the guy from the corner said, we'll cut our fees to make that fight happen. And Hagler, according to folklore, looked at the guy. Understand, Hagler's one of my favorite people. I've learned a lot reading Hagler stories. Hagler looked at the guy and Hagler said to him, No, no. I don't want you to cut your fee. We're in this together. Hagler then had the fight. Right? Controversial scoring. I understand there's Leonard Nation that thinks Leonard won. There's Hagler Nation that's convinced Hagler won the fight. But understand, Hagler made so much money from that fight that he walks away from the sport at 32. I know some people here want to argue that Hagler was disgusted with the sport and stuff like that. Understand, Hagler was offered even more money for a rematch against Ray Leonard. But Hagler went to Italy. Hagler left the sport. More importantly, the guys around Hagler got paid in full because that's the way Marvin Hagler wanted it. Right? Just food for thought. If I'm Anthony Joshua, I'm not playing games in the next negotiation with Deontay Wilder. I might even sit down with him and say, look, here's the money I stand to make. Here's the money from the event. Right? To make this fight happen, I'll split it 50-50 with you. If you think that thought is ridiculous, understand that's what Floyd Mayweather, <laughs> who was the best in the sport pound for pound, said to Manny Pacquiao the first time around before that fight fell apart over drug testing. Right? Guys who get it. Guys who understand what the other guy is bringing to the table. The opportunity they have to enhance their legacy. They want it to be a win-win. They don't want to offer you less than 40% of the event. What's the point of that? And in boxing, what goes around comes around. Right? You make a fair offer to Wilder. Let's say Wilder comes to your backyard and lightning strikes. He knocks you out. Let's say later in life, the two of you sit down to talk about a rematch. I'm just telling you the power of karma. If you treat a negotiating opponent the right way, on your way up, Many of those opponents will treat you the right way if you see them again. Right? Ali and Fraser fought three times. It would have been foolish for either of them to say, hey man, that first fight, you're going to have to accept far less than 40% of the event. <laughs> Let me also say too, both men benefited from fighting each other, didn't they? You say Ali's name, you think Fraser. You say Fraser's name, you think Ali. You think three fights. <laughs> you think the first fight, the fight. You think the thriller in Manila. Right? That's the opportunity Joshua and Wilder have. Let's hope they treat each other with respect. And don't have the idea of, I'm going to offer you a small part of the event. Right? This is the most you've made. You need to take this. Right? To me, that doesn't fly. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. As I said, say whatever you want. Just understand, we haven't had that fight for a year. Just understand the goodwill... The extra glow, the glamour of just having beaten Vladimir Klitschko, folks, that's gone now. Right? Boxing hardcore people remember that moment. A lot of other people don't. Right? Missed opportunity. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. 
I encourage you to look at Anthony Joshua's appearance on the Michael K. Show. Thanks for stopping by.